Rise and shine, campers. Day seven of Camp One Clap on the One Clap Speech and Debate podcast has arrived. And today, we're going to get a healthy back-to-back dose of Camp Counselor Izzy Garcia. I'm your camp director and host of the One Clap Speech and Debate podcast, Lyle Wiley. And yesterday, Counselor Izzy started the Interp Survival Guide series that will continue next Sunday. Today, we're going to get some great tips from Izzy about how to cut a script. Quick reminder, check the One Clap socials for today's social media challenge topic. Additionally, the ABCs of debate with Professor Graham and Kevin continues to add episodes to the future award-winning series. What awards, you ask? All the awards, my friends. All of them. All right, let's jump right in and feast on some excellent content around the campfire. It's time for a counselor campfire chat from Cheyenne South coach, Izzy Garcia, all about how to cut a script. Hello, my name is Izzy Garcia. And if you don't know me, I'm a current assistant speech and debate coach for Cheyenne South High School. I was a former competitor for Cheyenne South High School and a former college competitor for Casper College. During my time, I mainly specialized in interp and platform, and that is where my heart is. Today, I want to talk about the most fundamental aspect when it comes to interpretation itself, the script, our pieces, and what we do to it to make it special. The long and semi-painful process of script cutting. For most, this is common knowledge. You take a piece of literature, chop it down, bango bongo, you have a piece. But for some... This is a hard and complicated process, and I want to be the special guide that helps you. The round can be won or lost based on how well your story is structured, so we need to make sure that this piece is not only good for you, but great for the stage as well. Welcome to How to Cut a Piece. With mild success. I want to give you a guideline on what we're going to cover today. First, where to find pieces and how to determine if a piece of literature could be a good script. What is script cutting and how to tackle it some tips on poetry and poi, and finally, some good practices when it comes to finalizing your script. First, where to find literature and how to determine if literature could be a good script. The places to find literature are far and wide. Let's talk about some common resources that currently exist within speech and debate. Literature can exist in two forms. Speech and debate targeted scripts, or scripts usually utilized for theater. To begin, Speech and debate targeted scripts or scripts that are written for interpreters and speech and debate events exist to give coaches and competitors easy access to good stories without a lot of hassle. Places like 3P Speech, Mushroom Cloud, 4 and 6 Forensic Vault host such scripts for people to purchase at any time. They provide great narrative, dynamic characters, good humor, and even some blocking and intro tips. Despite these scripts being pretty foolproof, some edits could be needed to make the script stronger. A lot of the time, there is awkward dialogue, weird sections that lead to nowhere, or just general story points that aren't needed. Next, scripts utilized for theater are usually one acts, monologues, or full performances that larger theater groups choose to perform. Dramatist and Brooklyn Publishers are two places I know of where you can find these type of scripts. Interpreters usually flock to these places because they give stronger stories and more room to create their own narrative. Edits are definitely needed here because it's a larger piece that you have to whittle down. This is where we find some of the more iconic performances. Some of the best national finalists use full-length plays in order to create impact, so there's a lot of gold here. Now, while scripts are the normal when it comes to finding pieces, I personally love when competitors use books to create their pieces. Back in the day, this was more common. Spending hours of your life putting sticky notes on pages, highlighting sections of dialogue, and making notes in the margins. I know, times have changed, but if you were having a hard time finding a script you like, or you have a book in mind that would be a really good piece, please, I encourage you to do it. Just be careful. Tackling a book is very difficult. It's not for the faint of heart. Finally, something I do want to mention is the world of finding scripts online. More recently, competitors have found scripts to certain episodes of television and even entire movie scripts. I personally have no problem with this. NSDA's Manual of Interpretation events even amended their rules to include online publication. However, one warning I want to give is please make sure that your script isn't behind a password or paywall. If you were to be challenged at a tournament and don't have easy access to the original script, it could be a major issue. Please bring newer stories into our community. 
but make sure that you are also following the rules. Now, let's talk about how to determine if the literature you selected can be turned into a good piece. I know, I'm stringing you along, but stick with me. I have looked, and there's a minimal amount of information on how to determine if scripts are good enough to be performed. Listen, sometimes some stories are just hard to interpret. They are too vague or too complex, there is a lack of characters, or the story is too hard to translate to an audience. Here are the green flags for any piece of literature to prevent any issues I just stated. I can break this down into a couple parts. Well, more like three. First and foremost, you need to make sure that the piece has a narrative arc. Now, there are several narrative arcs that most stories use to help the audience with the story. I can go into massive details on which ones exist, but I need to leave you with some work to do. Just know that you need some sort of beginning, middle, and end. Wow, Izzy, thanks for telling me the basics of storytelling. I know. I know. It does seem weird that I have to tell you to make sure that there's a narrative arc, but you'll be surprised at the amount of performances I had to sit through where there isn't a climax or just jump into a character's trauma without knowing who they are at first. It is important that any piece of literature that you use contains one of these arcs. Without it, it could leave a lot of questions at the end of your performance. Do the research, find the narrative arcs, save yourself the heartache. Next, you're going to want to be mindful of the substance or the amount of material your script contains. Now, yes, this means you need to have enough to at least reach the 10 minute mark. However, it could also mean that your piece could have too much to get through and leave you with too much to handle. There are so many pieces out there that are so good, but don't have enough to be a performance. But on the opposite side, there are so stories with too much that really take the life out of the performance. You need to perfect the balance of just enough material to ensure that you can tell a story without too many moving parts. Finally, I want to tell you that you will need to be comfortable telling your story for the entire year. I don't think a lot of competitors take this into consideration when deciding a piece. If you're a humor person who has this crazy, elaborate piece with a million blocking points, do you have the strength to take it all the way to national qualifiers? Do you have enough willpower to tell this immensely a tragic story and not get burnt out? And please take the time to find a piece that will last the year with you. Again, I know this may seem redundant, but you'll be surprised at the amount of performances I had to sit through that were sabotaged because they didn't have the right pieces from the start. These pieces of advice are here to make sure that any judge at any point can easily absorb your story. So please take this seriously. Next, let's talk about what is script cutting and how it's done. The idea of cutting down a script, whether it's a script that is made for us interpreters or a full play that you're taking down to 10 minutes or fewer, is extremely daunting, especially if you have never done it. Let's answer the question, what is script cutting? Finally, Coach Izzy is going to answer the question after literal minutes of talking about it. Script cutting is getting rid of any unnecessary material in a script to enhance the performance. No, that was not a technical definition, I'm just really good at talking. With script cutting, practice makes perfect. It is definitely a monster of trial and error. I am going to be taking my time with this and trying to give as much detail as possible. First, we're going to go over some general tips and then some methods specifically to help you tackle script cutting. First, general tips. If you have a full play or really large script, find the story you want to tell. In really large scripts, you can find many stories to tell. In one of my favorite scripts, From White Plains, there are three separate plots. Each of them could be a performance. Finding the story you want to tell right off the bat gives you the advantage of being able to cut out so much material. Focus on one story, create the narrative arc through script cutting. Remember, you can move pieces of the script around as long as it doesn't change the story. An SDA rule. Having a point of view could eliminate a lot of the drama when looking at an entire script. Know your story. Don't be bogged down by it. When dealing with a more conservative script, begin the script cutting process with a little bit more caution. And by a little, I mean a lot of caution. 
It can be easy to cut out what you deem unnecessary and then end up with little to nothing to work with. But the best way to start with smaller scripts is to know the general plot and highlight what doesn't fit. If there are characters or dialogue that don't work with the story, that is the best place to start with smaller scripts. Like with larger scripts, having a point of view can eliminate a lot of the drama. If you're in the middle with a script that is not too long or not too short, this process is a little bit more delicate. It is best to highlight the sections of the script that you find will work with the story that you want to tell. This way, you can easily spot sections that don't fit. But how can I manage all this, I hear you cry. How will I know how to do it, I hear you plea. Welcome to the methods. I have given each fancy little titles for your enjoyment. You're welcome in advance. First method of script cutting. The Hobbit. This method requires the competitor to sit down and read their script over and over. And with their trusty pencil, yes, it has to be pencil, the competitor takes out sections of the script that add too much baggage to the overall story. But what does this baggage look like? Specifically, this can be small phrases. Characters that we portray like to talk a lot. Sometimes there is bulky dialogue or narration that can be cut out, and the message of the story is still there. If you find small, non-contributing lines in a character's dialogue or narration, just cut it out. For example, I really enjoyed the day. It was a lot of fun. We went to the docks. I couldn't take my eyes off the lake. I know this may seem crucial, but to me, this is small phrasing that you can just take out of the script. Another element that can be cut out with the Hobbit method is fluff. Fluff is what I like to call the words that block the actual story. This is the performing version of telling versus showing. You remember that English lesson, right? Show me, don't tell me. Many scripts try to set the scene and build emotion through narration. For example, I could feel myself getting angry. The only emotion I could feel in that moment was rage. I know, this may seem crucial, but I'm in the belief that you can show these emotions through interpretation and not through narration. Having to say that you're mad or sad doesn't allow the audience to truly feel the emotion. Now, I know sometimes in the script it is literally impossible to cut out this fluff, but if you can, do it. If you can't, really show out with these emotions. Okay, back to the specifics. The last element that can be edited out is ping pong dialogue. Dialogue that goes back and forth with little to no substance is what my head coach called rapid dialogue or ping pong dialogue. Sometimes going back and forth between characters can be really progressive to the story, more specifically with humor interpretations. However, if people are just talking to fill up time, then it should be cut out. Some prime examples are characters that just talk back and forth for so long and then it leads to nothing. No comedic elements, no character building, no emotion, just there to have characters talk. This happened, but then this happened, but also wait, this happened, and then all that dialogue leads to nothing. Remember, if it doesn't help the story, it's not worth keeping it in. To summarize, the Hobbit method is a great way to focus on details and create a story from the inside out. Be sure to review your work constantly, as this method could create tunnel vision and could potentially skew a story in the wrong direction. Remember, too much editing is also a bad thing. Second method of script cutting. The peak. Starting at the emotional peak or climax of the story can help the competitor fill in the rest of the story like a puzzle. This can also help competitors focus on exposition and conclusion parts of the story. Sometimes these parts are often left neglected, so giving them some focus could make your version of the script the strongest. Dramatic competitors can find scripts with so much emotion that there are two or three places that could be considered the climax. My advice, pick one, stick to it. Then you suddenly have a focal point to move around. Plus, you now have other sections that could be cut out because you picked this climax versus the other climax. Think of this like a triangle. You start at the top, work your way down, and at one end of the triangle, you have your beginning, then the point or the peak of the triangle is your emotional peak, and then bam, you have your conclusion. It is one of the easiest ways to tackle a script, in my opinion. Now, the third method of script cutting. The fin. 
For some stories, it could be easier to start with the ending and work backwards. Competitors may find it easier to know where they need to end and build around that. If you know how the story ends, you can take pieces of the script with certain limitations and create the rest of the story. This can allow you to focus on pacing and substance a bit more. This method requires a mix of detail-oriented thinking and larger narrative goals. However, it could be easy to mix up sections or include unnecessary material. I'm not going to lie, this is a hard method. But if you have a complex ending or a story with multiple endings, this could be your method. Try to visualize this like a, a cone. At the tip, you have your ending. And then as the cone gets wider, you have your beginning, your rising action, your climax resolution, and then it all kind of just works. I know it's not the best analogy, but, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying. Final method of script cutting. Fragments. You can treat your script as fragments. Again, another puzzle metaphor. Finding each piece of the script and then treating them as blocks and then putting those blocks together could give you a backbone of a script. Eventually, it'll transition you into a fully realized script. Visualize this process as a game of Tetris. If you're too young to know what Tetris is, please look it up, you're making me sad. Each piece of the story is a block, and you have to fit each piece just right to earn some points. I truly enjoy this method if you have a lot of script material to go through. It makes the process a whole lot more manageable. Whew. Okay, I, I know that was a lot. I encourage you to go back and listen to my stunning voice over and over and over. Also, do your research in order to help you create a script that you are happy with and that will shine well on stage. In any interpretation event, each story is worth editing and revising to help you perform it at its best. If you're stuck with script cutting, we've all been there. I'm going to give you some advice on how to get out of that really dark place when we go through script cutting. Number one, take a break. If you have a larger script or a lot of content to break down, you can develop tunnel vision or you can just get bogged down and the process is just so boring and monumental to take. Just take a step back, go for a walk, go outside. It can really help clear the mind. We speech kids rarely see the sun, so it's important to get some light every once in a while. <laughs> Next, do a cold reading. A cold reading is where you just talk through your script with no emotion and not a lot of character development. This can really reveal a lot of issues with the cutting or the narrative that you built. Going through the script slow and steady, not a lot of emotion, allows you to look at the script with a more unbiased lens. Number three, if you're stuck, phone a friend. Having someone who hasn't even looked at your script will expose some holes that could be present in the cutting. I know, it may seem a little scary to give your script to someone who doesn't understand you. I know it seems all they want to do is hurt this metaphorical child you have worked so hard on, but I promise it'll be okay. It could help you get out of tunnel vision and look at the script with a bit more clarity. Now, we're going into the section where I'm supposed to talk about poetry and poi. To be honest, this could be separate podcast episodes with people who are 20 times more qualified than I am. And I'm a coach, so, you know, take that as what you will. But I do want to take the time to talk about some starting points when it comes to these programs. First, let's talk about poetry. Poetry is usually a program or an amalgamation of pieces, poetry pieces, that communicate a central theme to an audience. Despite popular belief, it's not all about mental illness and love. The place to start with any program is to accumulate your material. If you have a theme or argument, which well, I'll get into later, it is best for you to gather your material and, to the best of your ability, lay it all out in front of you. First, you can start with a central storyteller when building your program. A central storyteller is the main narrative of your story. In programs, there are a lot of places in which audiences can get confused. If you create a central storyteller that you maintain throughout the program, you have a backbone to work with. You also could find it easier to fill in the blanks of the program, again, like a puzzle. 
Knowing what story you want to tell and having a backbone could allow you to create beautiful metaphors and strong emotion with other pieces. This is my preferred method when it comes to poetry specifically. You could also start with previous methods I have mentioned, like the Finn method or the Peak method. Starting with the climax or resolution here actually creates more clarity when it comes to programs. In a way, you're almost creating a central storyteller. You know where you want to go, and then you can build around that. If you know which poems you want to end on or which poems you want to build to, you can easily fit the rest in with little to no worry. However, when you have a strong ending or climax, I believe you have better pacing and better flow when it comes to the program. It could also be harder to find a climax or ending to the theme you want to showcase, so just keep that in mind. Next, let's talk about poi. Poi is what I like to consider an argument in which you are trying to justify. It's like a theme, but with just a little bit more power and persuasion behind it. While there is so much nuance to this event, here are some places to start when creating one. A piece of advice that I took from someone is starting with the counter voice. A counter voice is a voice that speaks in opposition to your argument. Again, what we're doing here is building structure. This opposing voice gives you, the competitor, an advantage of building around that voice and creating some internal conflict. Remember, internal conflict is good at building pace and reaching your emotional peak. You could also start with prose. Now, when I think of prose, I think about the supplementary event offered at NSDA Nationals, the person-driven story told to an audience. Certain people, I won't name names, think prose as its actual textbook definition. Articles and other pieces of writing that are told in the ordinary form. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Prose in either context can give a lot of clarity when it comes to the program. Again, it is all about structure. Starting with hard facts or articles or a person-driven narrative as the driving course to your emotional peak or ending. It gives you a guide on how you want to tell the story. If you have a bunch of facts about how your topic is bad to our society, or you have created a emotional narrative that people can follow along with you, you have created a path for us to follow you with. I know, it may seem hard to tackle these events, but I hope I gave you at least a couple starting points if you get stuck on getting started. Lastly, I want to talk about some fail-safes to prevent anything going wrong with your script. Fail-safes are so important when it comes to finalizing your script. Doing these small tasks will help you find any holes in your cutting and help you readjust if necessary. First, do a light reading. A light reading or a reading of the script with some emotion and passion behind your voice could allow you to get a real feel of the cutting and if you're able to perform it. Allow yourself to fall into the nuance of the performance and see if you truly do like it. Next, always check for time. I should have started with this. Make sure your piece is in time by reading your piece out loud with a timer going. I have seen some tragic events where some competitors have come up to me feeling proud about a cutting, only to be disappointed when their piece is under or over time. So remember, always, always, always check for time when you're cutting a script. Finally, perform to a small audience. Previewing your piece to an audience can allow for people to check to see if there's anything weird or out of place in your cutting. This really eliminates bias when it comes to your own piece. Remember, trust the process. They're not here to hurt you. Finally, I want to talk about some final thoughts when it comes to script cutting. Script cutting can be very difficult. Remember to take your time and always think about the story you want to tell. Remember, finding the piece and cutting it down is best done early, but not too early. We don't want to create burnout. The options when it comes to telling stories are endless. Always trying to find something that sparks and resonates with you. If you do that, you can make anything work. Don't let this consume you. It is really easy to fall into the pit of a story and get obsessed with it and then burn out or just be so bogged down by this process. Remember, there is a world out there and you deserve to be in it. Finally, I want to just say some general thank yous for listening to 26 minutes of me talking so freaking much. (laughs) Script cutting is 
never easy. It is always the most monumental task when it comes to interpretation. And I know you can do it because I've been there, done that, and got the (laughs) t-shirt. I want to thank all of you for listening, and specifically Mr. Wiley for giving me the time and space to talk about something I truly love. I hope I've given you enough material and advice so you can start script cutting and feel super confident on doing it on your own. You got this. I believe in you. (laughs) And I wish you the best in all your future endeavors. And thanks for being here. All right, I'll catch you around next time. Thanks so much to Camp Counselor Izzy Garcia for all of the helpful information about cutting a script. Counselor Izzy will be back with more episodes of the Interp Survival Guide later this month at camp. What's new at camp tomorrow? Well, the first Camp One Clap Quiz Clash will debut tomorrow with Counselor Londi Ganyan. Our first quiz clash will feature Anna Altabell from Star Valley and Hunter McComey from Riverton. Also, Counselor Adrian Graham will drop yet another genius episode of Professor Graham and Kevin's ABCs of Debate. Don't miss it. Remember, social media challenges are live for every day of camp this August. Until tomorrow, campers, may your sleeping bags be dry and your stars always be bright. For Camp One Clap, this is Camp Director Wiley signing off.